Bozo Bears received a swift spanking just hours ago as Bitcoin made its run above 41,000 US dollars for the first time in over 600 days. Meanwhile, gold rallied over 3% to new all-time highs, but then was swiftly dumped on big time. But what if I told you the reason this happened is bigger than you could ever imagine? Bitcoin right now is at its highest level in a year and a half. Um, and many people are wondering, is this pump now finished? Or in fact, is the pump even just getting started? And it's crazy to even think that that's possible. It's crazy to even think that after Bitcoin rallied from 15,000 US dollars to where it's at right now, about $40,000, is this really just the beginning of the bust? Is this the pre-bust, right? A lot of people are wondering that. And I have two gigantic things I wanna talk about first regarding uh, these charts. So number one, a lot of people and I've talked about this idea myself many times over the past couple of years. A lot of people, however, are attributing this or looking at this current move we see in Bitcoin, specifically here, but also really including this entire pump. Very similar, a lot of people are attributing that to what we saw back in the last bull market. Now, the reason that this is a topic of contention or a, a, a highly debated topic is because, well, what happened after that pump? Well, we spent the next like year, pretty much, pretty much an entire year um, with negative price action before then the halving happening. And literally right like clockwork after the halving, we then entered the, the giant bull market. Um, but I'm here to say two things about this. One, that does not have to happen. Okay. Absolutely, it does not have to happen. We also know that this the reason this even happened in the first place was because of March 2020. It impacted all markets. I mean, do I even have to go back on the the S&P, for example, and show you what happened there? Um, I mean, look at that. That is a gigantic 32, 35% drop in the stock market in the matter of a couple of weeks is unprecedented. Last time that happened was back in 2008. That is not something that happens very often. And it is not really something that people factor into their everyday analysis. It's what we call, obviously, a black swan. Also meaning, you know, that is not something you can predict, number one. And number two, it's not something you really um, can factor in. It, a lot of people are trying to now, and I think it's the silliest analysis. Every week somebody's pr predicting a new black swan. I mean, that's not even how that works. You can't even, you can't do that. But anyway, regarding this topic, we did not do that in the prior bull market. In the prior bull market, by this part of the cycle, we basically had just started up only. Um, where we are right now, if we look back into the previous bull market, we had already begun. Like we, The best times to accumulate, the best times to get in were long gone, and we, we were just levitating upwards. And so um, there's two things you can really compare. There's multiple things you can compare where we are right now to then, but even if we were, let's say we were, about to replicate a similar thing to like what we saw back here. Well, this happened, this, this pump topped out about a year before the halving. And where would we have to be? Uh, a year before the halving naturally, obviously is like April. So we're already eight months past that. If we were going to just kind of repeat what we did in the last cycle and get this crash for about 12 months, we are now less than like we're like 150 days away from the having, not 360 days, like the last time we topped out and then, and then dumped for month after month. So already there's also a big difference there. Another thing as well is that um, when we saw the, the MACD actually on the monthly chart, the 30 day chart, when we saw this crossover here, um, very quickly, within the first three months, momentum had topped out and we saw that momentum decline. Whereas we actually saw something similar back around that exact same time this year to where maybe that could have happened. We actually saw momentum start to die around um, May, June, July, and August. But over these last three months, look at the massive divergence that we've seen compared to the last time that that happened. I think the market, is showing us something, namely, this time is not exactly like back in uh, 2019. And I'm saying that uh, partially to quell some fears about something like that happening, 
But also, we do have to keep in mind, again, guys, redundant. I hate saying it every episode because it's just boring and overdone. But it's important that enough that I have to keep saying it. We will get a pullback at some point. I feel it's my responsibility to at least say that at least once per video just so people know it's not up only, right? I'm just trying to be responsible with that. We will get a pullback at some point. However, um, realistically, again, like I said, there are already so many massive differences in terms of the move that we saw back in 2020 or 2019 and 2020, that summer pump that turned out to be not much compared to now. This most recent pump over the last two months has really, I think, solidified for a lot of people, hey, this is this is already looking different. If anything, if we have to compare it to a previous Bitcoin bull market prior to the halving, which we don't, right? We don't have to do that. But if we have to, it's much more similar to back in 2015. But in my opinion, it's different than anything we've ever seen before. I think this is a very unique case. Um, and if we're being honest, I think that every Bitcoin bull market in the history, like let's say humanity survives another 20 years and we put in a few more halvings for Bitcoin, I think every halving will be a li at least a little bit different, especially as we go into that halving and every bull market because of it. Now, also a huge thing that I want to talk about is this. Gold today, over the last 24 hours, had a massive pump, broke new all-time highs. Okay, pretty big. But then immediately, actually had a pretty big dump and erased those highs. You can see that here. Basically, by the time people, gold bugs were getting really excited, and tweeting and everything about gold. It had already dumped back to levels um, from a couple days ago anyway. So one of the things that I think is so critical about this is that gold for a very long time is a very, and it still is, it's a good store of value. Um, and the people that defend gold and, and pretty much hate on Bitcoin, there's a lot of things we could get into why I think that's absolutely a huge mistake. I mean, one of the reasons I can just illustrate for you is this chart right here. Down here in orange is gold's percent returns. And you can see Bitcoins, okay? Not even close, not even a competition. The further we go back in time, gold literally has just flatlined the entirety of Bitcoin's existence as Bitcoin has gone up. Can you even see this little baby? Let me, let me zoom in. Can you even see this little baby orange line? Are you kidding me? These are the returns we're talking about here. What is this, a straight line? Are these even returns? What is going on? Well, I'm not impressed. I don't think anyone should be, honestly, if you compare gold to Bitcoin. But there are still a lot of people in denial about this. But the point is also, even if gold was some superior thing to Bitcoin and, and it was, you know, the point is too, one of the things people need in order to be successful in markets is to have the ability to have like foresight, right? This will benefit every type of investing, not just crypto. But if you can kind of get a glimpse of the future and kind of predict a little bit, you don't have to be perfect, but if you can kind of think, hmm, I mean, will, is this possible this could be big in the future? What are the reasons that it could be? Why is this disruptive? And you kind of like go through your head. Well, the simplest one to me is that look at the people that are growing up right now, the people that are coming into their 20s, 30s, and 40s and getting into investing. Are these people more technology savvy or less technology savvy? Okay, it's very obvious they're more technology savvy. The older generations are phase, getting phased out. The newer generations are getting phased in. This is so, such common sense. And do you think they're more, more likely to adopt a technology that has also been proven to be infinitely better than gold? Or do you think they would adopt gold? I, I mean, this is a long way of saying that if you have even the tiniest ability to be able to perceive what makes sense to happen most likely in the future, because nothing is guaranteed. But if you have like a pretty good sense, a pretty good read on where we're going, it is so obvious that Bitcoin clearly is going to be the successor, is going to be the, the winner in this race. If you even want to call it that, I don't even really like doing that because it's not really even, in many ways, it's not even comparable. But with that being said, I mean, is it possible? Maybe. I mean, I, I said this jokingly that, that uh, the reason gold dumped immediately is because finally people holding gold were able to put in a profit at these new all-time highs and then immediately switch to Bitcoin. I said that jokingly, but also, I mean, it's probably true for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Uh, or if it's not already, it will be soon. That's my opinion on that. If you hold gold, um, I hope it's been doing well. For, I mean, really though, I mean, if we look back, we can go back 20 years. Uh, and that's when you really have to, actually, if we go back 23 years, gold is up 800%. Keep in mind, that was also right after the gold ETF approval, which Bitcoin is on the verge of getting those as well. So uh, most of gold's ET or most of gold's gains actually came after its ETF. Bitcoin's about to get. 
eat multiple potentially right etfs whether it's in the next month or it's it's inevitable really um so imagine what will happen to bitcoin people are simply not bullish enough on on what is going to happen i believe very it's very very easy to see this um bitcoin's weekly chart guys this is looking impressive i personally think now one of the reasons i also brought up this chart is because um you saw how big percentage wise these gains were in that summer run back then it was like a 200 even three percent pump for bitcoin um from the very bottom even we're not even close to that for bitcoin it's up about 150 or so percent this this run went up about 350 percent so let's say even a scenario like that does eventually happen historically it's showing us that hey we could even still pump a lot more even before some sort of big dump but i personally think that the the massive hype and the knowledge of the bitcoin having that exists now that did not exist back then is going to drive this market so much faster and so much higher to the upside um i've been in bitcoin for like seven years when i got in the bitcoin having was not common knowledge even today, it's not common knowledge. I would say it's common knowledge around Bitcoin investors and even institutions, it's common knowledge. But like your everyday person, do they know what a Bitcoin halving is? No, I've literally said that to people before and they're like, what does that mean? You lose half your Bitcoin, right? That's like what most people think. They think if I hold 10 Bitcoin, the Bitcoin halving comes and then I lose half of my Bitcoin, and it goes to five. No, so, so people for the most part don't really know what a Bitcoin halving is, but the institutions do, I hope. I mean, for pizza's sake, uh, I hope that, I think they do. I'll, I'll be... 100% honest, I, I think they have to at this point, like everyone working that has any power or um, authority over like approving a Bitcoin ETF. These people know what Bitcoin ETFs are, uh, or these people know what Bitcoin halvings are. And they know they've seen the Bitcoin cycle charts. They are probably watching this chart thinking, wow, Bitcoin's probably going to do something like this over the next two years. And they want a piece of that pie. So it's not a secret anymore. But back then, back here in 2019, let's be honest, it like was a secret. People didn't know about that. I mean, I did. A lot of you did also. I'm not saying nobody on the planet knew, but like it was not common knowledge in the investing or the finance space, which now I would say, yes, it is. And so with that being said, I think that has the ability, the power to drastically change to drive this cycle in a different direction, to give it so much more tailwind, to give it so much more um, pumpiness, I guess you could say, okay, is the easiest way to put it. And so really, as the stock market is trading sideways today, not doing crazy good, the DXY still looks pretty garbo, uh, pretty garbage, it's down, I mean, it's up what? Let's see how much the DXY is up today. DXY is up like half a percent or something. It's still gonna trend down in my opinion. Um, ultimately, I think those are the two main points I wanted to cover is that this cycle is really, really gearing up here. And um, I mean, look how parabolic this chart has gone so far. I think at this point, you know, have we seen a God candle yet? I mean, let's go on to a weekly chart. I mean, these are really strong candles, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this candle, if it was a true God candle, do something like this. I mean, I think it would be a little bit bigger. I think it would be even closer to about this size, which I think even lands us into the potentially almost $50,000 range. It's possible. That's what a true God candle would be, in my opinion. If we got a pump that then would cool off for a couple weeks or a couple months, I think that if that God candle came before we did that, we would see at least maybe even close or a little underneath a $50,000 Bitcoin. Um, now that being said, um, I want to talk, I talk about pullbacks a lot. What if we get to 50,000 and then within a week or two, we go up to 60 and we break those all time highs before the halving, as I tweeted about a couple days ago, I think this is the first cycle where we have the ability to put in a new all time high before the halving the first time in history, because namely of a few things, the knowledge of the Bitcoin having cycle by millions of people on the planet at this point especially the people that have the actual big money, the whales, the institutions, those people know now, um, but also the Bitcoin spot ETFs, which allows some of those whales, all of those whales to even, to even you know, a new entry that was never, it never has not existed for uh, millions of people. So this is truly unprecedented. And that's why I'm not surprised at all seeing Bitcoin do what it has done in just the past two months, which is what? gone up about 55, 60% in two months. And take advantage of massive trading and sign up deposits if you're interested in trading or just buying altcoins using my links to Femex or Bitcoin below. Great exchanges to pick up different altcoins also. They have a wide variety of different things or whatever you're interested in doing if you're even just interested in getting Bitcoin. Um, and without any further ado, let's